explain what it is. So basically, it's a tool to migrate a computer from Windows to Linux in place, uh, transferring all your files, your settings, your programs, with the goal that basically it's a completely seamless transition so things look a little bit different on top, but uh, non-technical users can just keep going on and using their computers uh, exactly the same as they otherwise would. Mm -hmm. So it's basically an automated migration tool to go from Windows to Linux. Exactly. I, I, I guess the first place to start here is why? Like, why, why couldn't someone just go... Like, why wouldn't someone just go and install an ISO and then just move the files over? What, what, what reason did you have to just go and make this project to do it all seamlessly? I think that there's a common assumption in the Linux community that, you know, you just download the ISO, flash a live USB, boot from there, uh, install Linux, uh, or copy all your files first, and then install Linux, and... I, uh, I think we tend to overestimate the skill of the average user at doing so. And so I've seen this firsthand with some people I've helped switch to Linux. Uh, I just did it a couple days ago, actually, with someone, and they uh, they had no idea what a partition was, how to write images to a USB, and they were like, I would have completely lost on my own. And so I think there is a need for tooling to make this easier for people who want to make the switch but don't have the technical confidence to do so. Mm hmm mm hmm I would imagine... So are you doing... Well, you're in university right now. What are you doing? Is it like computer science, software engineering, or is it something entirely unrelated? I actually started out in software engineering, uh, mm -hmm. but then transferred to mechatronics engineering, uh, which is kind oh. of a combination of mechanical and electrical, mm -hmm. just because uh, I wanted to explore a bit of a broader range of technical subjects, but there's still very much a core software component to it. So I would imagine a lot of the people around you are probably more technical than the average person then. Yes, absolutely. But even there, you know, if you've done everything on Windows and Windows has automatically made your petitions for you and managed all this stuff for you, I could easily see why someone, you know, even someone who's built their own system, if you're doing it on Windows, you probably have never bothered interacting with petitions unless maybe you've installed a new drive after the system's been built and you wanted to petition it weirdly. Like that... That's probably the only yeah. time someone actually interacts with it, not at the core root file system level. Exactly. Like, I have friends who are in computer science, very good at it, but even then, they're still like, I don't know what NTFS is, so there's a bit of a gap there. <laughs> that sounds like a bit of an education gap, but sure. Sure. <laughs> You're probably right, but whatever the cause may be, it, it, it's still there, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, when you I guess we can go through the process of using the tool. So, mm -hmm. how does it all start? So, you launch it on Windows, and then what happens from there? So, uh, the sort of intended uh, way that you'll uh, proceed through it is that you'll download the installer, run that sort of standard Windows installer, and then open up the program, and it will show you a very minimal screen uh and that sort of minimalism is intentional i actually made the ui design initially to look kind of like the windows installation screen uh mm -hmm. just to give people a bit of a sense of like at home that i can trust this program uh and to show the most important information like let people know there are risks please still back up your data but not show so much detail that uh people just their eyes glaze over and they skip through it all because i think there's uh it's hard to strike that balance, but I've done my best to do that. And so then once you've read through all that initial information, then really you just uh, you press start and then it runs. It, uh, it goes through a couple restarts and the like three different sort of stages of execution, which I can get into later if you're curious about the technical details. Absolutely, but uh, yeah. basically from a, from a UX perspective, it just runs some stuff and then... Uh, ask you to input a new password and then uh, reboots one more time, uh, uninstalls itself, and then you just have your computer, which you keep using. So 